Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. Let's get started and we begin with some <laughs> West Central Spokane, where police and sheriff's deputies are surrounding a home right now. Kremlin News' Kyle Simchuk is on the scene and Kyle, what have you learned? Well, Mark, this SWAT standoff has lasted for several hours at this point. We have not been able to confirm the suspect's name or what they're wanted for, but police and deputies certainly have this home surrounded every 10 minutes or so. They keep announcing that they are not leaving. They're asking this person to come out with their hands in the air and saying that they do not want to hurt them. Now, this is near the corner of Ash and Boone. Spokane police tell us there was a pursuit earlier in the evening which ended at this home. The suspect ran inside and has refused to come out ever since. We also know that this person is wanted by the sheriff office and they do have a warrant to go inside. We're told Spokane police are just helping them at the scene at this point and that this person could be wanted by SPD as well. Police have shut down Boone Avenue from Ash to Oak. The Sheriff's office brought in a lot of resources, including a drone that is currently overhead. We'll continue to gather more information, let you know what we learn. Mark. Kyle, thank you very much. Meantime, our other top story tonight, the weather. It's a huge week for travel with the holidays and roads have been slick the past couple of days. Let's get straight to meteorologist Michelle Boss for more on what we can expect in the days and or hours rather and days to come. Michelle. If you're going to be traveling in the short term, it should be uh, easy going. Dry weather expected across the entire northwest for the uh, all of Thanksgiving Day. Uh, Friday, things are going to start getting messy again, especially over the Cascade Passes. And uh, the mountain passes are likely going to be seeing active weather all weekend long. But for now, things are quiet. We've got a lot of cloud cover across eastern Washington and north Idaho. But things are dry for tonight and expected to be dry tomorrow. Temperatures not terribly chilly with the cloud cover. We do expect lows in the middle to upper 20s. We're at 29 degrees right now. 28 in Coeur d'Alene. Of course, any of that snow that melted during the afternoon is going to be refreezing. So some of the uh, untreated side roads are still going to be slick. Here's a look at the short term forecast. Cloudy skies overnight, some patchy fog, temperatures dipping down into the 20s. And then for tomorrow, looking at partly sunny skies, hoping for a few sun breaks tomorrow afternoon with a high of 36. Cloudy on Friday with a high of 37. And it looks like rain and snow return for Friday night. And we could see more unsettled weather Saturday night into Sunday. All right, Michelle, we'll check back in with you later in the show. Thank you very much. Well, the cold slick conditions come as thousands of people are hitting the road for the holidays. Dozens of people waiting for their Greyhound bus at the Amtrak station downtown had to wait more than an hour. But Greyhound officials say it's not the weather causing the delays. Rather, it's a bus driver shortage. I've been waiting here for about 45 minutes. A little bit of a delay. Not too bad, though. Uh, just chilling here. Uh, really excited to see my family, uh, all my friends. I have a lacrosse alumni game that I'm going to play in. Many people say they decide to take buses and trains to travel instead of an aircraft because, well, it's just cheaper. There are limited options during the holiday season, though. For those who book in advance, a one-way Greyhound bus ticket from Spokane to Seattle starts at about $34, and a one-way Amtrak ticket starts at $29. If you are expecting company or planning to visit Western Washington for Thanksgiving today, one of the busiest days for car travel, WashDOT released their travel charts for Thanksgiving week. Expect heavy traffic from noon to two over Snoqualmie Pass. That was today. And then if you're coming back over to the inland northwest this weekend, make sure to give yourself plenty of time. Washed out estimating heavy traffic in the afternoon for Friday and Saturday. But Sunday is predicted to be the worst day for traffic congestion most of the day from nine in the morning until five in the evening. And now to our night beat with a quick look at today's top story. New details are this afternoon in the murder investigation of four University of Idaho students. Today in a press conference, Idaho State Police and other officials addressed the media as they continue to investigate the gruesome crime. We understand you want answers. We want answers too. Here are the three things we learned from the today's press conference. First, Idaho Governor Brad Little has provided $1 million in funding to support the investigation. Number two, police say they have so far gathered more than 100 individual pieces of evidence. And finally, more than 1,000 tips have been gathered and more than 150 interviews have so far been conducted. Coming up in just about 10 minutes, we'll share more on the latest about the investigation into that quadruple homicide. Meanwhile, one week from today, U of I will be holding a candlelight vigil for the four victims on the administration lawn on campus. It's scheduled to start at 5 p.m. There will be a remote option for those who can't attend in person. The Dean of Students, Blaine Eccles, says they will determine an exact location early next week. And as soon as we learn those details, we'll make sure to pass them along to you. 
A California gang member wanted for murder was arrested in Coeur d'Alene this past Sunday. According to the Kootenai County Sheriff's Office, 39-year-old Richie Michelson was pulled over for speeding in Dalton Gardens this past Sunday. It was then discovered that Michelson was wanted on a full extradition warrant for a murder that happened back in July. He is now set to be extradited back to California by U.S. Marshals. Though he had a Coeur d'Alene address at the time of his arrest, it is unclear right now how long he had been in the area. He also has no criminal history in Kootenai County. The city of Springdale in Stevens County issued a boil order for users of the city's water system today. The city is currently working on the issue. It's not known right now when it will be fixed. For additional information on the situation, residents are advised to contact Springdale City Hall. We will continue to update you on this story as we learn more. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just text us the word night to 509-448-2000 and we'll send them directly to your phone. Turning to some national news right now, tonight six people were killed, including a 16-year-old boy. Others were injured in a Virginia Walmart last night. It is by the grace of God that a bullet missed me. I saw the, the, the smoke leaving the, the gun and I literally watched bodies drop. A store manager of the Walmart was the one who opened fire last night, according to police. Employee Brianna Tyler first thought it was an active shooter drill and she was caught off guard that it was her own boss who was shooting. Several of Tyler's co-workers were among those killed, including 22-year-old Tynika Johnson. Police say the gunman, 31-year-old Andre Bing, was armed with a handgun and multiple magazines. When asked about gun violence today, Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin said, now is not the time to talk about gun control. This is the second high-profile shooting in the state this month after a gunman killed three people at the University of Virginia. And the shooting comes as the suspect in the LGBTQ nightclub shooting in Colorado Springs appeared in court via video for the first time today. Saturday, I night I thought I was dead. Sunday, I thought I would never walk again. Tuesday, I'm walking. The judge ordered 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich to be held without bond. He is accused of killing five people and wounding nearly 20 others inside the LGBTQ nightclub. The motive still unknown tonight. Born Nicholas Brink, court records show a name change petition at the age of 15 seeking to disconnect from a father with a criminal history. The change happened months after the suspect was allegedly viciously bullied online. The suspect's attorney says Aldrich is non-binary and uses they, them pronouns. Emerging details show a suspect with a complicated past, arrested just last year after their mother reported being threatened with bombs and other weapons. The Biden administration has again extended a pause on paying back student loans, at least until sometime next year. This comes amid Republican challenges to the president's plan to cancel student debt for more than 26 million people. A lawsuit from Republicans, six Republican attorneys general, argues the president is overstepping his authority in using the COVID pandemic as a national emergency to justify the debt forgiveness. The states filed their response to the Supreme Court today, and now the justices must decide whether to hear arguments in the case. And that was your Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time. But don't go to bed just yet. Coming up after the break, we are sharing an update into the investigation of four University of Idaho college students who were killed earlier this month. What investigators are asking tonight? Coming up next.